I wanted to share some thoughts with you this morning on the, the body of Jesus, <clears throat> which is an important part at this table. I want to preface this by saying that the Holy Spirit is precise in the words that he uses in Scripture, and we can depend on this. Yes. Um, we should not be distracted by those who uh, propose things like there are scribal errors in the Scriptures that, and uh or some other terms they use, you know, talking, basically saying that there have been mistakes made and it should say this and not that. Well, we don't have to listen to that. This is the word of God. It's not the word of man. And, and he keeps and protects his word. And the Holy Spirit, you can get right down to which, which words the Spirit uses in the scriptures and you can, you can count on it being the right word. And what I want to talk about, for a couple of minutes this morning is the, uh, the body of, of Jesus and the difference between body and flesh. <clears throat> you know, in the sacrifices, the blood was very important. Um, <clears throat> everything was sanctified by blood. The, the people had blood sprinkled on them and the tabernacle and uh, the utensils, everything that was used in the service of God had service to God had to first be sanctified with blood. And, uh, and we, we drink of the blood of Jesus at this table, <clears throat> the blood of the New, New Testament. <clears throat> but now the, the body also has a very important part here. <clears throat> and, so the, and there's a distinction to be seen in the, way, the words the Holy Spirit uses. <clears throat> we might think that body and flesh are the same thing. We, like, and sometimes maybe they're interchangeable, but, but not here. Whenever Jesus or Paul, either one, spoke about the Lord's table, they always said body, never flesh. Right. Jesus didn't say, this is my flesh. <clears throat> now, to, just to illustrate that these two words are not interchangeable, I'll give a couple of texts here and, and interchange the words, and you'll see what I mean. Hebrews 10.5 says, Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice, an offering thou wouldest not, but flesh thou hast prepared me. It's, it, that, that just doesn't work. It doesn't mean the same thing. That's right. it's a, a body. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, 1 Timothy 3.16, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the body, justified in the spirits. No, manifest in the flesh because the Holy Spirit's talking about a particular thing here because flesh has a certain association and when we come to this table we want this the word body the body of Jesus has a particular association that he wants us to see for example in the text I read in 1 Timothy 3 16 if if uh, if it said that God was manifest in the body well then we could ask oh, what body what kind of body because there's more than one body right there's celestial bodies there's terrestrial bodies, and even among celestial bodies, some differ in glory from others. So that would, that would leave that question wide open. What, what body is he talking about? <clears throat> but as I said here, at the, at the Lord's table, the word body is always used. In all three accounts of what we call the Last Supper, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus says body, not flesh. Matthew 26, 26, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. <clears throat> Mark 14, 22, blessed and break it and gave it to them and said, take, eat, this is my body. Luke states it just a little bit differently. Luke 22, 19, <clears throat> took bread and gave thanks and break it, and gave unto them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. So in Luke's account, he adds a little more. <clears throat> if you, you're familiar with uh, the, the King James Version uh, translation of the Bible, the words that are in italics were added by the translators to help our understanding. <clears throat> and the word given in this text uh, my body which is given for you, the word given was added by the translators, but it, it doesn't change the meaning of it. You could actually take it out, 
my body, which is for you. It doesn't change the meaning of it at all. <clears throat> and the reason I bring that up is because when Paul <clears throat> talks about this in 1 Corinthians 11, he changes it in the King James Version. <clears throat> he says, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. And again, the word broken here was added by the translators. It's not in the original language, but it, again, it does not change the meaning of it. The Holy Spirit guided all of this that we're, we're reading here. This isn't the interjections and opinions of man here. The Holy Spirit guided this. <clears throat> so Jesus said given and Paul said broken, but they're both saying the same thing. <clears throat> brother, brother Given brought this to our attention. I'm glad for it because I had never seen this prior to his saying it. <clears throat> but the what Jesus was talking about when he broke the bread it had, he had to do with breaking of himself to distribute to his people. He's not talking about his body being broken for sin or his body being broken on the cross because it wasn't broken. The scriptures are very plain. Not a, not a bone of his shall be broken. There, Jesus' body was not broken for sin. It was not broken on the cross. The point I'm getting at here is that, again, as with the cup... The, the body here, the, the whole purpose is for us to partake of it. He, he break the bread. Why did he break it? So he could give it to each of us. Yeah. So, so all of us could have some. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. So there's a wonderful thing to be seen here. That as, as we partake at this table, the Lord is actually, he's sharing himself with us. Amen. He's Amen. distributing among his body, not not just us here, but all the, all the saints at the Lord's table. The Lord is giving of himself to his saints. <clears throat> That's why he says body and not flesh. <clears throat> the flesh of the offering was uh, meant to be eaten at times. <clears throat> Sometimes the flesh meant the meat or it meant the skin, um, but never... Did the flesh mean the bones? And especially when the scriptures say flesh, it, it excludes the blood. Especially in the offerings. Flesh and blood were two different things. <clears throat> so Jesus doesn't use the word flesh here. He says body because we're talking about all of him. Yeah. All of him Good. is Amen. being distributed and partaken of here at this table. So body is different from flesh. The body of the sacrifice contains the whole, the flesh, the blood, the organs, the bones, etc., all of it. The totality of Jesus is contained in his body. In fact, the scriptures say the fullness of the Godhead dwells in him bodily. So when he breaks the bread for us at this table, which is another good thing to note, he broke the bread. He didn't pass a loaf of bread and the disciples take a piece of it for themselves. See, he, he distributes among his body as he will. He, he first broke the bread and he gives it. <clears throat> John said this, of his fullness have all we received, part of his body. And Ephesians 1.22, he hath put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things to the church which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So he distributes himself to us, and we, as a result, we end up being his fullness because he's dispensed himself to all of us at this table. So apparently this is true, that you are what you eat. Part of our communion with Jesus at the table of the Lord, then, is this, the dispensing of Jesus himself to us. Take, eat, this is my body. The divine resources that are in Christ are fed to us here. He is our nourishment and our satisfaction and our life. In him is righteousness, holiness, sanctification, the inheritance. He is the way, the truth, and the life, and he dispenses of his fullness to us here at this table of remembrance. <clears throat> so Paul also says in 1 Corinthians 10, the bread which we break, is it not the communion of the body, the fullness of Christ? For we being many are one bread, 
and one body, for we are all partakers of that one bread. Behold, Israel, after the flesh, are not they which eat of the sacrifices, partakers of the altar? Now, what was on the altar under the sacrifice, it belonged to God. Except for some sacrifices, the priests could partake. They, they ate of some of the meat, but it, it actually belonged to God. So in a, in a sense, it's like what belongs to God is being shared with us here by him. We're partakers of the altar. <clears throat> So then this is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your fathers did eat manna and are dead. He that eateth of this bread, you consume, you imbibe Christ's fullness as he gives to us. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>